Hey, what's up? Few days ago, I made a video where I compared United States and Russia to Brave New World and 1984, respectively. Uh, some people asked me to back up my opinion, bring some examples. I guess I'm gonna do two separate videos: one about uh, U.S., one about Russia. Let's just start with Russia and see how uh, social cultural environment in this country uh, connected to the novel of George Orwell. Well, if you turn on news on any of Russian channels or read any of Russian newspapers, you'll get very strong message from the the enemies are everywhere, enemies trying to destroy Russia, take over the world, and of course the enemy is United States that uses its minions such as Germany, NATO, Syrian rebels, Ukrainian government, transnational corporations, etc, etc, etc. So, in a given circumstances, Russia has no choice but fight back, and the only way to win this war is uh, for people to unite uh, together and stay with its government because government knows what's happening and how to uh, save the world. Uh, you can see exactly the same happening in the book uh, and it also brings us to the next point. As you might remember in the novel, uh, there are two other countries in the world and depending on current political agenda, uh, those three countries in a constant state of war with each other, but they ally one with another, fighting the third one. Well, and in order to make it happen and not raise any questions, they adjust in history. That's uh, what's happening, or to be more accurate, what about to start happening in Russia right now. For instance, there is a new movie that's been in production and it's about the last Russian king, uh, Nikolai II, and his romantic relationships with a dancer. There's a certain group of people, conservative, orthodox Christians, who are trying to stop this movie from being uh, released, and those people surprisingly pretty power, have, have pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, uh, so basically their complaint is that movie presents uh, Nikolai II in a bad light and supposedly he's been canonized and uh, pronounced saint for reasons that only Russian Orthodox Church knows but point being this is a historical event that actually happened he did have these relationships and the movie is not a political drama or sort of so it doesn't have any political message but since current political agenda in Russia does not fit an image of uh, last Russian king to be a human being with weaknesses, there are certain attempts to make it being forgotten. Uh, I think it's just the beginning, it's going to be worse in the future. Uh, and it also brings us to the third point, and it's a very strong message from the book that we get that it's all like uh, the whole existence of the system depends on fear and hate. Uh, as we saw before, fear is built through the idea that enemies are everywhere and the hate is to everyone who is different. And it doesn't matter if we talk about political views, uh, liberals in Russia are very suppressed by government and government supporters. It's, uh, they've been strong message again from the media. Uh, to put liberals in a very bad light, telling that they all work for uh, United States and they're not trying to expose the different opinions, they're just trying to destroy Russia. Also there is a huge hate towards uh, uh, gay community, again because those people are different from what majority of population is. Uh, there is hate to certain ethnical minority groups. Uh, so as you can see, Modern Russia has a lot in common with the book of uh, George Orwell. Uh, what's your opinion about that? As I said earlier, I'm going to make another video telling, uh, sh sharing with you why do I think that the United States is a uh, brave new world. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe, like the video if you liked it, don't like it if you don't, and I see you in the next one. Bye.